Hello everyone. All right, this is going to be uh, a one color painting. Uh, I'm going to do this one on Yupo. This is the um, 11 by 14, the Legion brand Yupo, which is uh, really good if you, especially if you want to get the your colors breaking up and staining a little bit if you're using Ranger. I'm going to use um, pink, I already forgot the name of it, pink sherbet. I love this color. I'm almost out of it, but blanked out on the name. Um, this one uh, does sort of, this. you'll see, it stains the papers uh, when you're using Yupo, and it's just really cool. Uh, so, I, I wanted to do just a one color for those of you who are new, especially, um, to, to kind of maybe get a better feel of just working with one color of ink to start out with. You don't need to try and blend in 10 different colors when you're starting out. Uh, it, it really is a good idea to just practice with one or two colors rather than using a ton. So. The only thing I'm going to be using in it today is my isopropyl alcohol, which is supposedly 100% pure. Uh, I doubt it, <laughs> but uh, supposedly it is. And I got this from Amazon, by the way. The, and my Revlon hair dryer. I, yes, I know this is no longer available, or at least currently not available. Um, on Amazon so I've got to look for another one that might be the same type of uh, give you the same type of results that that one does uh, and I'm a little hesitant to do that just because I would need to order it and try it and I actually I mean it should be fine if I needed a backup hair dryer but I have this one that's still going, and I also have a new one just like this in a box that I ordered a month or two ago uh, because I was getting worried about the how much longer mine was going to last. So I, I don't want to have like a whole you know stockpile of hair dryers that I've spent money on if I'm not going to be using them. But I will see what I can find out there that, uh, you know, for you, those of you who don't have one at all, that sounds like it might be the, the same as this one. And if I find one that's really inexpensive, then I'll go ahead and order it, because I would rather find you all a cheap one anyway, if I can. That was one of the things I liked about this, uh, the one I use, is that it wasn't super expensive. All right, so there's two different ways you can do this. Now, and I am gearing this towards the, the people who uh, are new to this. So those of you who don't need to listen to the specifics of things, you know, mute it, fast forward, whatever. Um, I am going to be, try to be specific with some of this. I'm sure I'll forget some things you probably need to know, but, um, I will try to get what I can in. There's two different ways. Some people like to put down the alcohol first and then the ink on top of it. And some people like to put down the ink first and the alcohol. Now, you'll notice I usually put down my ink first. Uh, when I'm working with Yupo, sometimes I do put my alcohol down first. Just because I know you'll still get staining, but it seems like it, it helps a little bit uh, with, I don't know, kind of, it makes the staining not as dark or something I don't know but anyway I'm I am still going to go ahead and just put down my ink first um, I do want you all to be able to see what kind of color you're gonna get off of this pink sherbet as it breaks up or you know stains the paper and, and pulls some of the pigment out of the ink itself as it's moving I don't really have any specific shape in mind for this so we're just going to go with it now if you use pink sherbet uh it is a very pastel color you are going to run out of pink 
to spread very quickly. And it's also one of those colors that has a tendency to get some water spots. I'm sorry, I'm turning this on heat for just a second. See, I'm, I've gotten those water spots there. Which is one reason I wanted to turn it on heat for just a second. But as you can see, only just a minute of heat will make your paper start warping. So be very careful. Um, but this is very light. You can't spread it too far. You might want to use a little more ink and a little less alcohol than what you would normally use with it. Um, now I've got to try and decide what on earth I want to make this one do because I hadn't planned that far ahead. I wasn't thinking very clearly. My mind was just on, ooh, I have a few minutes. I need to make a video. And I apologize to all of y'all who've been waiting for responses from me for the last week or two. Uh, I keep trying to get to them, and it seems like every time I sit down and try to start answering people, I get, you know, one or two answered, and then I have to stop and go do something else, and, you know, of course, nothing ever goes as I plan. So, you can see I'm using a lot more ink than I usually would there, and less alcohol. Now, right now, I am just trying to dry this, and then I'll go back and spread it. You don't have to do it this way. I don't always. But that's just what I'm doing today. And now when you're using UFO, you need to be a little more careful about the little fingers of ink that want to run because you're where it stains you're going to end up with that visible underneath some of your other stuff here it's kind of like some weird little worm crawling there <laughs> so when i dry this there's nothing particular that i do other than just try to kind of keep it in one spot when I do it like this, this is just kind of laying out, you know, what shape I might want it to loosely resemble when I get done. <coughs> just about got that too light there in the center. I, uh, I haven't done one using this color, just entirely this color, the pink serbet. I've never done one just entirely with it, so this will be new for me. One of the other things you kind of have to watch out for with this color, the pink sherbet, and some of the other lighter colors is they have a tendency to build up in spots and it gets a little hard to move it when it does that. Uh, it takes a little more, you know, swishing back and forth of your alcohol when you start spreading it out. So I think I'm actually gonna add a little more right here because I don't want my center to be the lightest part. I would rather it was the darkest part. So I'm just gonna add a little more in there.
Not sure what kind of shape I'm going to end up with there. <laughs> we'll just play with this and see what happens. Uh, this may end up completely bizarre. Oh, all right. That's okay. Uh, well, this is supposed to be a, a teaching moment, right? So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the shape is. Now, it... Okay. So, I'm trying to think how to word this. Depending on... the. There's several different ways that you could take this now and wisp it out if you want your wispy. So I can start at one end and do small wisps and it's gonna look like, you know, burst here and there. I can make my wisps all come up this direction, you know, or down the other direction like that. Or I can make it very abstract and just come off in different size wisps that go different directions. So, you know, kind of just get something in mind before you start spreading it out as to what you want to do with it. And I think I am just going to kind of go here and there and hither and yon and see what happens uh, rather than making it, you know, just more straight lines out through here. I'll have some parts that are narrower, some that are fatter. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I may end up hating it, but you got to try. All right, so put your alcohol down there. I put it about half on and half off of my ink. Just blowing it out there and blowing it back. And as you may have heard me say before, you want to be sure to keep your alcohol out here, but not much ink out here. If you want that, I mean, can you, I tried to lighten that up before I started filming this and it still didn't work good. Um, but if you want this extreme wisp right here, you make sure that you keep your alcohol on the outer edge and not get your ink out there, or very, very little of it, uh, so that you can blow it back in towards the center. So, if you're going to do one like this, where I want it to kind of maybe go different directions, for me, turning my paper helps me do that. So, that's just entirely up to you if you want to turn your paper whatever's easiest for you. Sorry, I will be right back. All right, sorry about that. I was being paged, had to talk to Zoe for a few minutes. All right, so I'm gonna try and get this one to go more out this direction. Now see, I'm adding some alcohol out there because that ink was getting really pretty dark out there and I didn't want that. And I put that in there just because it was starting to dry and I wanted to keep it moving. All right, so if you've watched my videos before, you'll know that on some, that's kind of weird. Looks like somebody going, hey finger up there um on some of my videos um some of my paintings i try and get us a, a line going back down the middle well i don't want that with this one so as i come back with it i'm trying to really spread it somewhere i don't want to thin it down into a line i want it to spread which is why when i got down here and noticed that it was really narrowing down i put a little more alcohol on there to try to keep it from doing that so much Also remember, you know, I said have something in mind, but that means literally what I said. Have something in mind. Don't go into it thinking, okay, I'm going to do this and it's going to look exactly like I want it to. Because the chances of that happening are slim. At least they are for me. If that happens for you all, boy, I hope, 
I, I applaud you. Y'all are better than I am. Um, because things rarely come out looking exactly what I want them to look like. This is a fluid abstract art form. So, you know, the, I, it, seriously, the chances of it coming out exactly the way you want it are pretty slim. You notice I'm sort of putting it half and half, half on the ink, half on the uh, paper. Did you go? Now, I'm not sure if you all can see good where I'm getting the staining in here. If you all can see the color, it's just sort of a, a very light tan, um, just with a hint of peach color almost to it. I'm trying to get it, I can't, I think that's in focus there. Um, but it just kind of adds a little bit of depth to it when you do the staining. And sometimes I like to do just the one color with staining because it, uh, I mean, you've got that under layer. It's simple. It's somewhat, mm, I don't want to use the word elegant, but you, I mean, you kind of know what I mean. It's, it's not as busy. It, I don't know. Maybe you don't know what I mean, but <laughs> I know what I mean. I just can't explain it. I got to figure out how I want to do the end here. So my end right here is a little bit paler than I would have liked. Didn't quite get enough ink in here. And the reason I can tell this is because um, I'm having to push too much ink back over it to cover up the staining because all you see is the stain right there and not the ink color. And yes, that is a hot mess in there, but I know, and I'll, that's part of what I'll be working on. There's times in the center that I'm just not all that concerned with how certain areas look, because I know I'll be going back over those. So I am going to stain it more, of course. I'm gonna put down just a little more and see if I can um, get a little more color to this end right here. All right, switching over to heat for just a second. Get rid of a little bit of, yeah, I'm back on cool now. Um, just to help get rid of some of the, the water beads, little moisture beads. Now you can get those moisture beads from your alcohol. Uh, the lower percentage you use, the more water your alcohol is gonna have in it. And so the more likely you are to get uh, that moisture, the moisture beading as you're painting, but some inks will do it even if you don't add alcohol to them. There are just certain ones that I've discovered when I'm working with them. There's just certain colors that are more likely to do that. And I, now, right now I'm talking about the Ranger line. Um, I honestly can't remember about the Jacquards uh, the, or the Pinata. It's the same company. It's Jacquard is the company, and Pinata is their the line of alcohol inks that I'm talking about. Uh, I can't remember if the Bria Reese ones do it or not. Now I I just don't use those very often. Those are beautiful colors, but. I think I may have mentioned before, there is something about the smell of those that really, really bothers me for some reason. 
I don't really know why. Just one of those smells that gets to me. I just ended up with a, I don't know what, hot mess right there. And you're going to get little things like that sometimes. You're going to have to go back. Uh, and it's a lot more noticeable when you're using these pastel colors on the Yupo that stains. And so you really got to watch out for some of that. And I'll go back to that side eventually and work on that. And you want to be careful to keep your your um, airflow, your ink, moving towards the the, the center. <coughs> One of the comments or questions that I've gotten recently has been about actually a, a few people actually. Um, have sent me messages or made comments about this is that they're getting infinity rings Now what will do that is if you're doing too much just circling around Your your alcohol and ink you've got to keep most of your airflow Going in the direction that you want your ink to go in now You do have to corral it and kind of you know every now and then but you want to, the majority of your airflow needs to go the way you want your ink to go. So keep that in mind um, when you're doing that. I almost, I almost hate to try to fix this because I like this right here. And I know I'm probably going to end up messing it up. So, uh, but, but that's going to bug me. So I'm going to take my chances here and see. Let's see what happens. I feel like I'm going to wash out too much color, too, if I'm not really careful. Ugh. I got to wash this thing. I may end up with... I don't even know what color I used last tooth with. I think I'm going to put brown in it. So, right there, I'm just using this for those little spots that I cannot get the ink to move over top of again. Because that happens sometimes. It just makes these little circles, or it wants to go around, like there's a little dam there or something. And I will use this. This just came, uh, I've mentioned it before, but just in case you haven't seen it. It came from the um, acrylic paint stuff at Hobby Lobby. And I'm sorry, one of you all actually told me what this is called. And I'm really sorry, I completely forgot. Um, this is not one of the things that you would use for shading. This is not a blunt or a stump um, that you would use with charcoals. This is just plastic. And it's just got a sharp tip and a f but what one of you all told me is that it's for when you're doing resin or um, acrylic pouring that you can use the little sharp tip to either pick things out or you can you know if you want to make little swirly lines or whatever um, you can do things like that with it but I do not know what it's called you can use any object you want I, this is laying here because, as you can see, I think, from the back end of it, I've used it a bunch to do that. It's got alcohol ink all over the back end of it. So, you can use whatever you have handy that does not require any special tool. Just something that will help you move your inks.
Now I, I still, I've seemed like I've ended up doing what I didn't want to do and having too much going the same direction. Um, so I'm going to try to get a, a bump going back this way. See, you'll notice these little dark spots. That's where that ink kind of dammed up a little bit. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of spots where if you want to get rid of those altogether, you're going to have to really go over that area a lot. Or you can do like that sometimes. If you've got something like that thing, you can just sort of rub them with. Um, that can help. Uh. My ink's running away from me today. Okay. <laughs> For some reason, this is where the ink has a mind of its own, okay? Because no matter what I do to try and make a line come back this way, it, it's doing everything exactly the same right there. I don't care what I do. It just keeps on doing whatever it wants to do. So, and sometimes that happens and you're better off to just go with it. So I am letting that run just because I know that I'm going to be, you know, working that in there. So it's fine. I'm not going to, not going to worry myself about that. And remember to keep your airflow off to the sides. You know, you don't want to get it right over top of your your alcohol or it's going to go everywhere. Um, any of you all who are brand new or if you're having trouble with that issue and haven't watched them yet, um, I did a couple of um, frequently asked questions videos. One I know is number 19. I think think the other one might be number 50 uh, you really should watch those because I tried to address that pretty well that is one of the biggest issues that I get asked about is um, why am I getting these little fingers and legs of ink that run everywhere so I do really try to address that specifically in those videos um, I do not do a painting in those videos. I do demonstrate what I'm talking about with some, you know, ink on paper, but I don't do an actual painting. So, those of you who only want to see an actual painting, that's not the ones for you. But uh, if you're having trouble with some stuff, they might definitely be worth checking out to see if any of the questions that you had or problems that you're having uh, you know if, if any of those are the same things other people are struggling with as well and that's definitely one of the biggest that I hear about is um, people struggling with the ink running away with them uh, also uh, remember to be careful not to use too much ink or too much alcohol. The more liquid you have out here, the more difficult it's going to be to control it. I mean, it's that's just, you know, physics, I guess. Um, so, you know, just be conscious of how much ink and alcohol you're putting down. Generally, 
Now, obviously not this. This was very pastel, so I did use more ink. But the darker colors, uh, stream and indigo, especially some of these really dark ones, the, um, the, the, the one drop, uh, you seriously can need to use in one drop at a time of ink. You know, do your one drop, spread it out. Even if you don't whisk it out like this yet, just spread it out like I did down through here originally with your alcohol. Get dry, you know, dried puddles going first. And then you'll be able to tell if you're going to need more ink. And you can add it, you know, kind of as needed after that. You can see I'm doing a lot of going back over that right there because I did have a, a pretty good dried up little band of ink right there that having a hard time picking back up. Takes it a minute to, to re-dissolve in the alcohol. And to those of you who are getting the infinity rings, uh, kudos to you because I can't do it on purpose. I'm sorry. I have no earthly idea. what. I, maybe I am too used to blowing too long from one direction or something. I don't know. I cannot do it. I've tried. I gave up. I just gave up on that one. So see, those of you who are worried that you're not doing good enough at this particular art form, if you can make infinity rings, you've got me beat. I think a piece of fuzz came up off of my extremely overused pad here on the table. Oh yeah, uh-huh, I see there's a little bit of bright yellow right there. <laughs> so, just gonna dry that. Ah, let me get my hair dryer on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do this first and then I'm gonna see if I can get that out of there. You gotta watch out for those drops like that. That just happens sometimes with these bottles. You'll get just a tiny little spot of alcohol that wants to jump out of the bottle and kind of spatters. Which is annoying. Here's one little tip. If you're getting that, the little very many spots, go with it. Use it for embellishment. Take um, anything, honestly. You could take something like this, a, a dotting tool, a fine liner brush. If you want bigger spots, you could use a cotton swab, but that would give you some pretty big ones. Uh, and just, you know, make little dots here and there in it. I've actually done that before to try to cover up some places I did not like. I'm trying to get it away from ink that's on my pad here because I'm going to have to work right up against the edge and I'm going to afraid I'll end up with more color that I don't want in it off of this pad. I am desperately overdue for changing it. Oh, look. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Now there's like five little dots on there. Where it just 
splattered out again. It actually, I think it has something to do with a little pressure buildup. Is when it's warm, when the alcohol is warm, because I have noticed that it happens worse when I hold my alcohol bottle than when I'm setting it down and picking it back up. And now I'm just got stuff going everywhere apparently. I am just having a major struggle here right now. Got this weird little I did fix the spot on the side that I didn't like, but it got away from me right here, so I am gonna try to do something about that and hope I don't splatter more ink or alcohol. But one thing about these colors, um, the pastel colors, the ones that want to kind of dam up a little bit, they are a little more difficult to control, just for that matter, which is why I kept this handy for this painting, because they do, you know, want to very quickly start their little damming process in there and there's just once that happens it just makes it so much harder if you don't have quite a bit of alcohol it makes it harder to move it on there so i've got some little squiggly areas like this which you know is one of those things that a lot of people excuse me a lot of people would not even notice but i am and i'm debating on i think i'm gonna put one more out here because I just don't like this. That that doesn't bother me as bad, but this one does. It's just too bleh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's my art term. Bleh. Uh, it's blobby looking and I and that I don't like. Some some paintings you wouldn't notice it in, uh, but this one I'm going to notice it. So I'm going to do something about it. I hope without missing anything else up. I hope Another tip that you'll figure out real quickly on your own when you're putting down your alcohol uh, until you can learn to turn your dryer the other way, you might want to consider turning it off. I, and I know this, this is pathetic sounding. I actually struggled with that a few times as I was starting out, believe it or not, because I know most of you are thinking, well, duh, that is a no-brainer. Well, it wasn't a no-brainer for me. Um, I literally would go to put down my alcohol, and I would move my hair br or hair dryer, but it would be like move it to over here and so I would go to squirt alcohol and I would get this spray it would just splatter it across everything so be aware there's your tip you'll notice now when I do it when I put down alcohol I turn my hair dryer to the other direction completely and and you know move it back and turn it to the other direction to keep it from blowing on my paper all right I'm leaving that the way it is I'm satisfied with it. I love this color. I just think it's an awesome color. And I've got a frame that I can put this in. So, um, there you go. I I hope you all learned something. Hope you got some good tips out of it. I, I tried to keep you informed a little bit about what was going on and what I was doing. And those of you who are new, I hope I wasn't too confusing I know I can be at times, but uh, if if I'm saying something that you don't understand or that's confusing to you, you know, send me a comment or a message. Uh, I'll get back to you eventually. Uh, it's most likely not going to be quickly. I wish that I had all the time in the world to just answer all of y'all's questions. Unfortunately, I don't. 
I'm going to try to figure out sometime soon how I can do something like a live stream so that you all can just jump on and ask me questions and I can answer it right then. So I don't have to worry about forgetting anybody's questions or anything. All right. Well, I hope that all of y'all have a wonderful day. I love every one of you. You know, if you like what you see here, don't forget to give me a like and a subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. Like I said, I will try to get back to you. There are some links down below in the description. My Amazon affiliate links, um, Arteza affiliate links. Uh, there's uh, my Amazon storefront link, which is just affiliate stuff. It's not, I'm not actually selling stuff on Amazon. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. For Canada, the UK, and the US uh, is listed down below. All right, so all of y'all, have a great day. I love every one of you, and I will be back with y'all real soon. Bye.